Hello, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend of Friday, December 7th through Sunday, December 9th. Um, this is a general energy reading, okay? This is not love, sign, or career, or anything specific. This is just what Spirit wants to talk about today, okay? The messages that Spirit has for you at this moment in time. And because because energies are fluid, um, just because it's coming through today, it doesn't mean it has to be something that's going to happen today or tomorrow or over the weekend. This could happen, this could have happened already, or this could just happen later on down the line, or it may not even happen for you at all. Yes, take what resonates and leave what doesn't, all right? So, with all of that said, um, settle in, guys. I just want to say that this might be a little bit of a longer video. I mean, these are usually like about an hour long anyway, but it's the weekend edition, so I'm going to be doing, you know, I'm covering three days here, so I may do a second pull. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens, but anyway, all right. Let's get to it, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, uh, December 7th through Sunday, December 9th. All right. Thank you so much, Spirit. So for some of you, you know, there's some green energy, like, I believe green energy came up yesterday. Um, there's a lot of heart chakra clearing that's happening. And I've been saying this for a while. And I don't want to, I don't want anyone to think that, you know, your heart chakra is going to get all cleared up and then that's it. It's over. It's done. Boop. You're next. Uh, uh, next. Sometimes it's, it's, it's cyclical. Okay. It's a, uh, it's a cycle. You know, you'll go through periods where something will be cleaned out and then, you know, you'll recuperate and you'll rebuild and then something else will start to clear out and you'll recuperate and you'll rebuild. You know, it's a cycle. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, there's some major heart chakra clearing. Um, lately, especially, you know, with the messages that have been coming through this week, um, you know, a lot of us are getting over a pretty heartbreaking situation. Um, we're either coming to terms with it or saying our final goodbyes or, um, you know, just, uh, you know, getting over it in whatever way, that, however that resonates for you or whatever that means for you. So, or if not getting over it, then just getting through it, getting past it so that we can or so that you can eventually get over it or just like move on. And I say get over it lightly. Um, that's a pretty harsh statement. Um, get through it is a better way to say it. So the heart chakra is really being cleared out. And for many of us, the heart chakra is actually in the process of opening. OK, that is that is a big thing. Um, and in, with the heart chakra opening, we are learning or at least getting comfortable with, acquainted with unconditional love, compassion, forgiveness. Um, there are a lot of situations that many of us are going through that require a heavy amount of forgiveness. If not for the other person, then for ourselves, you know, forgiving ourselves for how we may have acted, forgiving ourselves for what we may, we may have done, forgiving the other person so that we ourselves can move forward, you know, um, wherever you fall on that, on that spectrum, you know, it's happening. Okay. <laughs> this, is a, this is a big time of forgiveness for many of us. All right. One last shuffle. Alrighty, guys. So let's see what we have for the weekend. Yeah. Friday, uh, Friday, December 7th to Sunday, December 9th. Here we go. Okay. Well, we've got, there's that good old Knight of Pentacles. Okay. Uh, we've got the two of wands here. Um, all right. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it at this for now. We'll look underneath the deck in a second, but oh, oh my. All right. Well, we've got, we're starting off with the Knight of Pentacles and the Devil. All right. This was the first thing that came out here. Um, so check it out, guys. There are people out there that are 
There are individuals out there that are, I, I want to say, abusing this Knight of Pentacles energy. Okay, it's like they're saying, "Oh yeah, well, I, I'm I'm just," or at least they may they may not necessarily be saying this outright, but their energy is saying, "Well, you know, I just gotta make sure I have every stone." unturned or or I've I've gone through every single option that I could I've plant mapped out every little detail that I can um, before I really make a decision or before I mean yeah make a decision geez two of wands um, and the three of swords <laughs> I'm not done pulling I'm gonna pull some more but um, it's like this slow and steady wins the race energy is coming from a place of heavy codependency It's fear. There are individuals out there, um, and actually, it's interesting because I do kind of resonate with this because I was kind of in this position before, um, at one point with, um, but it was a situation where I was with somebody and I... I forced myself to, to, to try every single thing I could before I moved on from the situation instead of just listening to my intuition and my heart and saying this just isn't right. I don't need to, I don't need to work every single angle of this because I know this isn't right for me. So I just need to move on. Um, and there's a decision that needs to be made that's going to break someone's heart if their heart isn't broken already. And I just get that. Their hearts have been broken already. Uh, take that as it resonates. I'm not saying anyone's done anything right or anything wrong, but what I'm saying is hearts have already been broken. But there is still a decision that needs to be made for the highest good, for the higher good of certain individuals. So, okay, for example, let's use Twin Flames right now for an example. And this is just an overarching um, uh, category, okay? This is not this is not specific, okay? Even if you're not a twin flame, you can most likely relate to this. But we'll take the twin flames right now because that's what that's what we understand the most. Most of us hearts have been broken anyway, okay? For mo for the most case, the divine feminine has moved on, but that doesn't mean that both individuals aren't heartbroken about it. But now we'll say the divine masculine, because this is this is coming through as the divine masculine mostly. Um, or at least just masculine energies, but even though your twin, your soulmate, your counterpart, whatever, may have moved on, you, masculine energy, whether you're male or female, you still have a decision that needs to be made for your highest good, and you've been stalling. You've been stalling. And the worst part about it is, Knight of Pentacles and the Devil, the worst part about it is... <laughs> The worst part for you is that you still have to make this decision regardless, even though your divine feminine or your counterpart, your feminine, whatever, is just is not going to be around. This is still a decision that you need to make. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, or actually what I'm seeing is it's kind of a slap in the face because your feminine has been saying this to you for some time and you refused to listen and now she's moved on. And you're left to your own devices, and I, I don't mean that I don't mean to be harsh or mean, but I'm but I mean this is just the language that's coming through. It's, uh, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to be an asshole about it, but you're kind of you. But she's moved on, or he's moved on, and you're left to your own devices. But you still have this decision to make <laughs> because whatever situation you're in right now does not serve your highest good, and it never has. And you had this individual buzzing around you saying this to you for a while and you refused to listen because you thought he or she was crazy. Well, they're not crazy. They actually know a lot of what's going on around you because they can read the energy. <laughs> Ooh. But that's all right. It's fine. No, it's fine, really. It's just fine. I'm kidding. I'm being melodramatic. I'm totally kidding. But it's okay, honestly. It really, it really is okay. Because it's not even like this person was trying to make this decision for you. My grandmother is confirming that. This person wasn't trying to make this decision for you. They were, try they were looking out for you, to be honest. 
they care about you. Even if things have ended poorly and you guys are no not even close to speaking terms, you wouldn't even dare come around each other, be around each other. They still care about you. All right. Let's get a second poll going here. See what else we got for the weekend. December 7th to December 9th. Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you so much, Spirit. There we go. Oh, goodness. Okay. All right. Oh, good. Okay. Underneath the deck now is the... Psh, fucking right. The Queen of Swords. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We got the Queen of Swords there. We got the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords has been coming out all week, but this time it's upright, which is good. This, this is, to me, is saying there's movement forward. Oh. The Knight of Cups. What else? What else? Ooh. The Hierophant in reverse and the Empress in reverse. Well, gee, that sure is interesting. Okay, but, um, wow, what is this about? There's movement here. Oh, goodness. All right, so I'm getting, I'm really, I'm getting, mostly getting caught up on the Hierophant and the Empress in reverse here. But what Spirit is saying to me is the Hierophant is the father, the Empress is the mother. Wow. Um, please excuse the pause, you guys. I'm really just trying to make sure I get this uh, before, <laughs> before I start talking about it. Okay, with the Six of Swords and the Knight of Cups, there's some sort of movement happening here, but... I'm not exactly sure what this movement is because of the Hierophant and the Empress. Okay, these two are reversed. So what I'm getting is, and like I said, this is, this is kind of symbolizing the mother and the father. I feel like these individuals are being rejected in some way. Maybe it's what they taught you is being released, finally. I want to put these up here. Because I feel like those are the major mess, especially with the Queen of Swords, all right? The Queen of Swords is talking about an individual that is cutting some shit out, all right? Um, cutting some shit out. And I really feel like this is the masculine energy is getting in, getting in touch with their feminine energy and utilizing the energies of the Queen of Swords, all right? And it's like they're rejecting the patriarchy and the... It's like, what this is saying, to, this is like mommy and daddy issues. The Empress being the mother, the Hierophant being the father. Now, these are not the official... Um, these are not the official counterparts in masculine and feminine. The official counterpart would be the Empress, Emperor, or the Hierophant and the High Priestess, all right? But, but, the Empress being the Divine Feminine, and we are, I really feel like we're talking, we're speaking to the masculine energies here, all right? Wow, this is now this is starting to make sense. We're talking about the masculine energies here. So the counterpart to the divine masculine would be the empress, okay? And then the hierophant would be the father figure, um, the patriarchy, the uh, uh, society, um, status quo, things like that, religion, um, stuff like that. And that would symbolize the structure that the masculine has learned throughout their lives. So, I 
It could symbolize what they learned from their fathers. And the Empress being, it's, I'm getting an overbearing mother energy from the Empress. Enabling, an enabling mother. Um, maybe, maybe even a helicopter mom, not going to lie. But I mean, this is a general reading, so take what resonates, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a smother type energy. It's either an energy of someone being too present or not present at all, which has created either way, whatever it is, however it is, the, the combination of the Hierophant and the Empress has created a codependent situation with the devil here. Okay. And with the Knight of Pentacles, this is someone that's really very loyal to the crown, to the cause, to themselves, to who they love, to whom they respect, who, whatever. They're very loyal, and they do things thoroughly. Um, it's, I'm getting an energy of someone that just kind of works for peanuts, you know, and is satisfied with the praise that they get from the higher-ups here. They don't really do it for the money. It, and it's strange because this is pentacles, but this is an energy of someone that doesn't necessarily do it for the money or the fame or whatever. They do it for the respect the, um, that they would get, that they would receive the, the honor. That's the energy that I'm getting from this Knight of Pentacles here. But you see, whatever is going on, the the... The loyalties lie to individuals that are toxic, or the situation is just a toxic situation with the devil here. And there is a choice that needs to be made, and that's going to break some hearts. Um, it's going to break the hearts of the person making. The, it's going to break the heart of the person making the decision. Yes, but that person's heart has been broken for a long time. For a long time by these individuals, the Hierophant and the Empress, both in reverse. And when it comes to the masculine energies, this would be why, this would be a big reason as to why there's this big rift between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine within the Twin Flame situation, okay? Because the Hierophant here, who is another masculine energy, his heart or her heart, whatever, it's 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 energy, it's not gender, but this person has been heartbroken or battered and bruised by situations from other fem from other empresses. Okay? And so that has put that has taught this individual certain lessons that have put him or her at odds with the Empress. And now when they meet their twin or when they meet their counterpart, their their divine feminine or whatever. I mean, this does, you don't have to be a twin flame to resonate with this, okay, guys? But when they meet, when they come in contact to, then all of this drama, all this struggle, all this heartbreak, this pain, this toxicity, these negative lessons that they've learned comes roaring up, and it all goes, gets directed at this counterpart. And there you have the battle, the war that's being raged, that's been raging. There's a very heartbreaking decision on the table, you guys. And no one, nobody can handle this or make this decision other than this person here. Whoever is represented by the Knight of Pentacles. Utilizing this energy of the Queen of Swords. So I do see, I do see this person cutting something out, all right? Finally making decision, maybe even getting ahead of a, a mind of their own. And I say that lightly, I don't mean to offend anybody. But that's kind of the energy that it is. Getting a mind of your own, thinking for yourself instead of just following what these two have to say. Because it's not even like these two know everything, no matter what they may try and tell you. These two don't really know everything. All they know is their own experience. And I'm not trying to devalue them for that, but that does not mean they know everything. Okay? So I do see this person making a decision, cutting something out, making a choice, and moving on 
with the Six of Swords and the Knight of Cups. The Six of Swords has been coming out of various times throughout the week, and it keeps coming out reversed. Well, here we go. Now it's upright. So someone is finally moving forward now. And within the energy of the Knight of Cups. So this does not mean, I, I, I'm not trying to get anybody's hopes up. I'm not trying to say that someone's going to come forward, this person's going to come forward and offer you a cup of love. No. At this point, it would be really foolish for them to do that. And you all know why. I don't need to get into the specifics of that one. You know exactly why it would be foolish for that person to come forward and try and offer you some sort of cup of love. So what I'm seeing here, with the Six of Swords and the Knight of Cups, I'm seeing someone moving forward with their heart in their hands now. Finally realizing that they need to have a heart. That they need to honor their emotions. That they need to learn to respect love. So with that said, I'm going to say for many of us, the whole Twin Flame situation was a success. <laughs> if you want to say it that way. Because someone got the message to learn how to love. And that's really the ultimate goal here. Now, does it suck that there has to be all this heartbreak just to learn that lesson? Yes. Yes, it sure does. <laughs> yes, it sure does. Okay, let's, let's do some clarifying, guys. All right, we're going to start with the Hierophant and the Empress, both in reverse. Please clarify the Hierophant and the Empress of Spirit. Thank you so much. Eight of Wands. All right. Wow. Underneath the deck. Ooh, damn. Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah. Underneath the deck is the Ten of Swords. I mean, I told you, somebody is done -zo. Queen of Cups, Eight of Wands. The, oh, yes. Hallelujah. The unknown and the ace of motherfucking cups, y'all. So someone, wow, someone has really learned to love themselves in the face of this programming, I want to call it. With the Empress and the Hierophant both in reverse, this is programming. Someone has really turned on that heart light. The Queen of Cups is saying here that someone's intuition really kicked in. There was an, a, someone actually really got connected with healthy feminine energy. And I want to say had some sort of conversation this could be this could be someone external. There, someone finally could have met up with someone that was of the feminine nature, whether that's male, male or female in gender. They still had healthy feminine energy, and they had some sort of conversation. Um, and this doesn't have to be external. This could be just you got you had some sort of conversation within, right? You finally got connected with the feminine energy within. You balanced it out. You healed a lot of things, and then you had an honest conversation about it. Okay, because the Eight of Wands talks about communication. It also talks about swift movement. There was some sort of dialogue, whether that's external or internal. And that allowed someone to really start to fill up their own cup. And as that cup started to fill up, and I'm not saying it's completely full yet. Um, I'm, what, I'm, what I am saying is they're in the process. This person is still in the process of filling this cup. But it's gotten sufficiently full, full enough where they were finally like, Fuck all of this with the Ten of Swords. Okay, that the Ten of Swords, this is completion. This is not just an ending, this is completion. 
And so then the Queen of Swords energy came through and started slicing and dicing. And, and I'm not saying that anything has really been cut out yet, but now the Queen of Swords is coming forward and saying, okay, we've got to make some changes now. And so they're faced with the unknown. But in no way is that a bad thing. If you guys have been watching Morning Coffee lately, then you, then you know the unknown has been coming out a few times, and it's not bad at all. It's really just about moving forward with an open mind. It's about understanding that you are not going to have all the answers before you move forward. Now, for some, I am getting an energy of someone is moving forward towards a Cancerian. Queen of Cups does talk about can cancer. That is like the main card or, or the main depiction, but it could be any water sign. But it, I, I feel like some for some of you, I just picked up on this. Uh, I just picked up on this. For some, someone is moving towards a water a water sign or a feminine energy that's going to be very loving, caring, and nurturing for them. It's going to help them heal and going to help them grow. It's going to help them. It could potentially help them fill the, or learn to fill this cup on their own. Almost like a mentor in some way. But it would be a feminine energy. Because it's the Queen of Cups here. But that's what they would need. They would need a feminine energy to help them heal the damage, the wounds. Okay? Wow. All right, so the second row here. Two of Wands, the Devil, Knight of Pentacles, and the Three of Swords. Codependency. There's some sort of change that needs to happen. There's some sort of decision that needs, that needs to happen. It's going to be a heartbreaker. Br hearts are broken already, I'm not going to lie. Hearts are broken already, but there's, some, there's like a final push that needs to happen here. <clears throat> and someone has been using has been kind of abusing this Knight of Pentacles slow and steady wins the race energy so that they can stall. They're basically stalling, procrastinating, going around in circles in order to not necessarily make a decision because of this codependent energy, okay? I mean, I'm just tapping, in, I, I'm just tapping into that right now, it makes me want to cry because it's like this, this, this decision that needs to be made is a tough one. But I just heard autonomy. And when I said it before, I was talking about how someone was like needs to get a mind of their own or is finally getting a mind of their own and is thinking for themselves. But now that they're thinking for themselves, it's like they're seeing all the heartbreak that heartbreak that could happen. But what you're missing to whoever is feeling that, what you are missing, what you're not not that you're missing it, you're overlooking the heartbreak that you've already been through. And you are favoring the hearts of others over your own. But this is, this is what you would need to learn here with this Ace of Cups filling up your own cup. And you can't fill up your own cup if you're constantly working on keeping the other cups full, cu uh, cups of others full. You know, does that make sense? You can't fill up your own cup if you're constantly working on keeping other people's cups full. Okay, let's get some clarification because I'm rambling now, but let's please clarify spirit. Thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> the Knight of Wands is underneath the deck. The Ten of Wands, wow. The Five of Pentacles. Oh my god, this is exactly what I was just talking about. The lovers. <laughs> I'm sorry, please excuse my melodrama. <laughs> but this is literally... Oh, this is literally what I was just talking about. Literally. I, this is blowing my mind a little bit, guys. I'm not going to lie. The lovers. Let's talk about this for a second. The lovers is often about a choice, okay? This could be Gemini energy, but this has nothing to do with signs right now. I often see the lovers as a choice between vice or virtue. 
And I'm going to show you guys, because I have this deck right here. This is, I'm going to tap it. I'm going to tap into the, the traditional Rider weight. Oh, God, the traditional Rider weight deck. And I look, I'm going into this because I want to show you this, why I just why it's depicted, why I see this. this. Um, but I just looked underneath the deck, and the Ace of Cups is underneath this deck. <laughs> That's really awesome. But let's see. I'm getting... Oh, no. Oh, no. I spilled my tea all over all my cards yesterday. So... <laughs> oh, look, there's the Knight of Cups, too, right underneath that Ace of Cups. But now all the cards are stuck together. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. But I want to show you this because the lovers is often viewed as a choice, okay? And I like to see it as a choice between vice or virtue. Um, vice being, you know, the wishes and desires of others. Virtue being your own wishes and desires. And we were literally just talking about the fact that you can't fill up your own cup if you're constantly thinking or working towards, here we go, if you're constantly working towards filling up the cup of others, that would be a choice of vice over virtue, right? So this is why I see it this way, because in this traditional deck, the Rider Waite deck here, right, this is the lovers in this deck, and you have, um, you can say Eve in front of the, the tree of life and Adam in front of the burning bush. It doesn't have to be Adam or Eve, but that's kind of, that's sometimes how it's symbolized, right? But you have Virtue, the feminine figure over the tree of life, or uh, standing in front of the tree of life, or vice, the masculine figure standing in front of the burning bush. Okay? And I, I, you guys, I was literally just talking about that with the lovers here. So someone is in the process of choosing themselves. Now, they are well aware, first of all, it's, it's incredibly contradictory, and this is where the heartbreak comes into play, because they are well aware of all the burdens that they're carrying. They're well aware that they need to let a bunch of this shit go. But they're also well aware that they're about to leave some people out in the cold. Now, here's the caveat. Because haven't you been left out in the cold? Right. It's a catch-22, isn't it? Because you know, with the Five of Pentacles here, you know what it feels like to be left out into the, in the cold, to be neglected, to be brushed aside, to have your desires, your dreams, your goals, your truth be rejected because someone else doesn't like it. But now you find yourself in the position to do exactly the same thing that they have done to you. But you see, it's not quite the same. Why? Because you are, that the universe just said it, so I'm going to say it the way I heard it, you are the phoenix from the ashes risen. You have come out of this situation. You have learned about who you are, who you are in truth, or at least who you want to be moving forward. Knight of Wands. To me, the Knight of Wands is very much a spiritual warrior. And that's what this is symbolizing here. So you've gone through the period of isolation, even though you may have been surrounded by a ton of people. You still felt alone, destitute, lacking, left out in the cold, isolated. But in that, you found yourself, to a certain extent. You may not have completely found yourself, but you found enough of yourself to now say, I have a decision to make. You found yourself enough to realize the burdens that you are carrying that aren't even yours to carry. And now you have to choose the lovers and the two of wands. You have to choose. And it's not even a situation where it's like someone else is forcing you to choose. No, the circumstances are forcing you to choose. What you have learned is forcing you to choose. What you have learned. Seven of Pentacles also flew out. But this flew out and fell on top of this part here the programming section, we'll call it, and it fell crossed, sideways, because the lessons have been learned. This is the harvest card. This card often symbolizes the sun in Virgo, okay? So this is the harvest. This is, um, you reap what you have sown. And for the most part, what, has, what is being reaped is something that has been sown for you. What do you mean for me? For you. The programming. The mother and the father. The patriarchy. The establishment. 
everything that was shoved down your throat since the day you were born, that you were just forced to regurgitate or face ostracization, if I said that right. Ostracization, whatever, you get it. Excommunication, we'll say. Face this energy, the five of pentacles, the, the, the lacking, the out in the cold, the abandonment. But you know what's so funny? In your effort to not feel like this, that's still where you ended up. Why? Because what you were living was not authentic. So it's an age-old story of you're leaving yourself out in the cold. No one can leave you out in the cold except for you. Because if you don't accept yourself, no one else will. You can damn sure believe that. If you can't stand up for yourself enough to stand up for who you are in the face of the opposition, ain't nobody going to do it for you. But I think you're really starting to learn that, aren't you? Congratulations. But yeah, it sucks. It's pretty fucking shitty, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the world we live in. All right, finally now, I do want to clarify. I do want to say, look at that. We've got three knights on the table. The knight of wands is underneath the deck. You have the knight of cups and then the knight of pentacles. I really feel like somebody's growing up here. I really do. But let's go ahead and clarify the six of swords and the, and the knight of cups. Someone is really moving forward. And I want to say love is the focus, but it's not even like they're, they're moving forward because they're in love with someone. It's because they have become, they have somehow, somehow someone has come to greater terms, has become, has come to a greater standing or a greater relationship with love itself. And they're learning the art of self-love here with the Ace of Cups. They're learning the art of divine, unconditional love. And so now someone is moving forward with that in mind. With their, basically, I'm hearing with their heart on their, their sleeve, but it's not even like they're trying to give their heart to someone. They're just becoming comfortable with being vulnerable. There it is. Vulnerability. But, um, okay, so let's let's clarify this, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Please clarify. Six of Swords and the Knight of Cups. Thank you so much, Spirit. Wow. That's enough. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, shit. Underneath the deck is the Knight of Pentacles. Again. <laughs> so it's like... So it's like, slow and steady wins the race. Sure, okay, we're still in that vibration. All right, that's fine. That's fine. I think the Ten of Swords came out. No, it's the King of Swords. Whoa! We're still in the slow and steady wins the race vibration. Okay. Now, I understand that. I get it. Um, it's something that you are, are, whoever I'm connecting to, whoever I'm channeling for right now, it's something that you are used to. It's a, it's, it is a method that has worked for you in the past, so it's okay continue to do that. It's what you're comfortable with. It's ha what helps you feel safe. All right, that's great. We have the Three of Swords twice, you guys. So someone is moving forward in the face of all this heartbreak that they've dealt with. Three of Swords. The Hierophant. The Ten of Pentacles. The King of Swords. So we've got the counterpart here, because the Queen of Swords is right here. King of Swords. Six of Cups. Childhood. Past. Um, now. Oh, and then finally, what is this? Ooh, whoa. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse. <laughs> Now, to me, the Queen of Pentacles embodies the mother as the motherly aspect of the Empress. And the Empress came out reversed. And now we have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. And this fell out in this row here. In this row in which there's a choice that needs to be made. 
So to me, this is someone that's rejecting a motherly figure, even potentially a karmic partner that resembles the energy of the mother, whoever that is for this person. Cutting them out. Especially since that came out with the King of Swords while I was pulling and the King of Swords came out. So they're connected here. To me, the King of Swords is saying enough is enough. Okay, this establishment, this status quo has really done more to break the hearts of so many individuals. I mean, I'm not trying to get into like a political or religious debate here, but I mean, think about all the controversy around the Vatican, around priests. And I'm not trying to spark any, so I'm not, I'm not trying to, 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 to put forth any sort of narrative or agenda, but just look at it. Think about it. Think about how organized religion, and I'm again, I'm not trying to bash it, but think about how organized religion has been fairly destructive over the course of human history. Even though it was a situation in which, um, you know, People have learned about spirituality. People have gotten kind of connected with God. I mean, I am someone that firmly believes that organized religion absolutely does have a place in human reality, in the evolution, the spiritual evolution of a human being. I absolutely believe that organized religion has a, a, a solid place in the spiritual evolution of a human being. But it's not the end-all be-all. And... In many cases, it has done more to hurt people. The Hierophant and the Three of Swords. Over the course of human history. And so now this is being rejected here. King of Swords. Cut out. Done. Bye. It's like you're seeing the truth. You're seeing through the lies, the deception. I'm hearing, for some of you, you're seeing through the abandonment. Look, I, I already feel it. I feel, and I'm not even done recording this message, and I already feel the backlash about what I'm saying about organized religion. And I'm not, if you are, if you still, if you still uh, um, connect with that sort of thing, or you're still a part of it, please Please do not let me tell you, or please believe that, please believe me when I say that I'm not bashing it in any sort of way. But in this reading right here and right now, it is the establishment. The patriarchy, the status quo, whatever you want to call it. It's the establishment that has been the heartbreaker here. Keeping up appearance. Tradition. Not that, again, not that there's any anything wrong with tradition, but it becomes de detrimental when you are um, honoring tradition over all else, like say someone is, someone's happiness. If someone wants to step out of the tradition because it no longer makes them happy, it's not what their heart is calling for, why should they be demonized for it? Okay, all right. So we get it. All right, cool. We have the Ten of Pentacles and we have the Six of Cups. Lifetime achievement is what I'm hearing. So someone is reconnecting with their inner child. Their innocence that they thought they lost, but they just lost track of. They're reconnecting with what it is they truly want for their for their lives. Now, this could be financial. It could be financial, business-wise, um, some sort of job, some sort of career that they've always wanted. But it feels like more than that. In this situation, the Ten of Pentacles is not just about career or finances. It's about the full physical package, what it is they truly want in their material existence.
So this could be a relationship type thing. This could be a family type thing. This could be, you know, wanting to live in a certain place or in a certain type of house or that, you know, having that kind of thing. It's more than just the, the career. It's about every, every physical representation in their life, material representation from the people around them to the physical objects around them to the career that they have also that someone is reconnecting with. And that's quite beautiful, to be honest. All right, guys. <laughs> Let's get into the Oracle section now. All right, weekend edition. Oh my God, I totally forgot. I forgot to mention something, but we'll talk about it in, in a second. We'll talk about it in a second. All right, here we go. Oracle guidance for the weekend. Thank you so much, Spirit. Camel. Wow. All right. And I'm going to take Earthworm also, which is underneath the deck here. Um, but what, I'm, what, I, what I forgot to mention, I can't believe I forgot to mention this, but um, for those of you that know, Betsy, uh, that, that know us, Betsy and I are doing um, a joint reading this weekend. Joint Twin Flame reading on Sunday. Um, Betsy is of Fearless Intuition. If you don't know her, please check her out. She's one of my very, very best friends. Um, she's like she's like my soul sister. But we're doing a joint Twin Flame reading this weekend on Sunday on my channel at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay? Um, I'm going to post it. I'm so sorry, guys. I completely forgot. I can't believe I did that. Anyway... <laughs> Let's just finish the reading here. Okie dokie. We're going to start with Earthworm. If I can find it. Here we go. Okay. Earthworm. Shy. Hesitant. Reluctant to share inner vision. We have all felt the woes of the earthworm at some point along the way. The earthworm indicates a newbie or novice working to establish confidence in a new field. Others around you may seem wise and experienced, but it's important to, rem to remember they once felt earthworm energy too. This card is a reminder not to be intimidated or lose hope. Mastery takes time and you're on the right track. Besides, rumor has it a beginner's mind offers the most valuable insights. When in balance, earthworm is earnest, intelligent, and valuable. When out of balance, earthworm is self-conscious and apprehensive. To bring into balance, one must speak up or risk and or risk embarrassment. And that card is kind of perfect for, because there's a new journey that someone is embarking on. And they're going to have to do this alone. Camel. There we go. Camel. Resourceful, independent, knows oneself. The camel can handle absolutely anything as it carries a wealth of nourishment within. This wondrous creature is self-reliant and handles challenge with ease. Even in the face of excess heat, judgment, or anger, the camel searches inside for the cool elixir of water to calm the situation. The camel represents the ultimate form of bringing opposites into balance, fire and water, and being responsible for, one, for one's own reactions. The camel is a wonderful traveler and is especially fond of trips to faraway lands. When in balance, camel is calm, content, and has a sparkle in the eye. When out of balance, camel is dehydrated and lacks vitality. To bring into balance, one must go on a pilgrimage. All right, and so then finally, I'm going to close out the reading with the whispers of love because that really wants to come through right now. So yes, so catch me and Betsy. This weekend, Sunday, 
uh, December 9th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're doing a joint Twin Flame reading. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about things a little bit, and then... And then, yeah, we're going to do the reading. Okay. Here we go. One more. We're good. Alrighty, guys. Let's see what we have for today. For the weekend, actually. December 7th to December 9th. Here we go. What is all you need? <sighs> Love makes the difference. Love can help heal past hurts and provides a sense of security, self-worth, and importance. This is card number 31. It boils down to a four. Four is a number of stability, foundation. Love makes all the difference, you guys. All right, so there it is, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday for our uh, joint Twin Flame reading. And it is going to be live, okay? So that's going to be fun. I'm super excited about it. Betsy's super excited about it. So yeah, there it is, guys. Take care. Much love. Have a great weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Yeah. Bye.